Hey, welcome back. In this video, I just want to do a quick one on how to calculate angular displacement. So angular displacement is like the building block. It's like the fundamental unit of circular motion problems. And it's exactly what we were talking about in the last video when we were talking about uh, radians, degrees, revolutions. It is the quantity that is theta. It's like how many times something has rotated or like how far through a rotation we've been. So if we go ahead and draw a big old circle here, and we imagine that this circle here is rotating about its fixed axis, and if we draw on basically some radiuses here like that, where this is r and r, that makes this angle here theta. So theta is the angle that's subtended by this arc. Basically, we're going to call that L. And you might have seen this expression here before where we have L is equal to R theta. This holds true so long as our angular displacement theta is in radians. Um, and we can also, you know, we can really clearly rearrange this to say the angular displacement, actually let's just write that out, is equal to theta, which is equal to L over R. So angular displacement is to circular motion as displacement is to linear motion because basically what's going to happen is if we have angular displacement and we derive it we're going to end up with angular velocity and if we derive that again we're going to end up with angular acceleration uh, so the symbols for these actually for angular velocity is omega and for angular acceleration is alpha but if you just ignore the word angular in each of these cases we would have displacement you know, deriving displacement to get velocity, deriving velocity to get acceleration, they're all just the rate of changes of each other. And then in a linear case, instead of having theta, omega, and alpha, we would have s, v, and a. So we can even write these in, you know, d theta, dt, because uh, these are usually with respect to time, and d omega, dt, or, you know, the second derivative of theta, and dt squared. So you're going to be seeing these quantities a lot in the future videos and example problems, uh, but I just wanted to kind of make that connection where they're, instead of in linear motion where we're looking at s, you know, that linear displacement, we're, more, we're interested in angular displacement, which is not like, angular displacement is not the arc length, it's the, it's the angle subtended by the arc length, or basically like the number of revolutions um, or partial revolutions in in either radians, degrees, or just revolutions. Uh, typically, we're going to be working in radians, though. So for a really simple example of where this can go, let's say we have a radius of this disk that is, I don't know, um, five centimeters, and the outer part is going to rotate through this arc length, uh, and we're going to say that that is, let's say, six centimeters then our angular displacement theta is really simply just going to equal six centimeters over five centimeters. The centimeters are going to cancel out. We're going to be left with a dimensionless quantity of six over five, which is equal to 1.2. And that dimensionless unit, when we're talking about theta here or angles, is we're going to substitute in radians. And uh, you could put this in terms of revolutions or degrees if you wanted to. Like if we wanted to convert um, 1.2 radians to, let's say, degrees, we would just multiply it by our conversion factor where we have radians on the bottom. So we'd have 2 pi radians and with 360 degrees on the top, that would cancel out those units. And 1.2 times 360 over 2 pi gives us about 69 degrees. And actually, while we're at it, let's just convert that to uh, revolutions as well. So we're going to times 69 degrees by uh, 360 degrees on the bottom with one revolution on top. So basically 69 divided by 360 gives us about uh, 0 0.2 revolutions. So whether we're talking about angular displacement, which is theta, you know, it's either 1.2 radians in this case, 69 degrees, or 0 0.2 revolutions. Those are all three different ways to talk about the angular displacement of this disk that's rotated basically that far. So pretty simple stuff when we're looking at just L equals R theta or theta equals L over R. That's just basically all you need to know for angular displacement and understand that it is uh, 
well, that the veloc angular velocity is the derivative of angular displacement and angular acceleration is the second derivative. And, you know, you can also obviously go the other way by integrating going that way. But in the next couple of videos, we'll just go over some uh, introductions and examples talking about angular velocity and acceleration and some of the other formulas that go around with those and then make some connections to uh, their kinematic equation counterparts for linear motion. But yeah, that should be good for now. Join me in the next video and we'll start working on angular velocity.